In the previous lecture, we have discussed uh, uh, a brief introduction regarding the two approximate methods in uh, band theory of solids. In fact, uh, we have provided a brief introduction of the nearly free electron approximation and the tight binding approximation. Actually, uh, you know, the exact description of electronic behavior in a crystal must take into account the actual potential experienced by the electron due to the ion cores and all other electrons of the crystal. And so this is a very complicated problem. And that's why I have told you that in general we adopt two approximate methods. And uh, what are those two approximate methods? What are, what are the important basic facts of those two methods? We have already seen in our introductory lecture. Now from today, we will discuss these two approximate methods separately in very detail. So our present lecture will provide you the detailed discussion on the nearly free electron approximation, okay? You know, uh, in case of this nearly free electron approximation, the potential under which the electron moves, that periodic potential is very weak. And as the potential is very weak, so uh, we can treat it just as a perturbation, okay? So when the potential is weak and it is taken just as a perturbation, then uh, the approximate method is known as nearly free electron approximation, okay? And uh, for dealing this problem, you have, you need a concrete knowledge of approximate method in quantum mechanics. You, if you have done the course on, on your perturbation theory in quantum mechanics, then you have seen there are two perturbation theory. One is called time independent or a stationary perturbation theory and another is called time dependent perturbation theory. And actually these are approximate methods. When there is a perturbing potential, then Hamiltonian gets in, a, <clears throat> in fact perturbed and uh, how such problems can be handled, uh, you uh, learn in your course on quantum mechanics. So I will suggest you, if you want to understand this idea of nearly free electron approximation in exact manner, you must go through the concept of uh, time independent perturbation in your course on quantum mechanics, okay? Consult any standard text and go through the go through the concept and then it will be easier to understand this uh, nearly free electron approximation okay but i hope you have uh, done your course on this and so you can enjoy this lecture okay so for uh, dealing the problem of uh, nearly free electron approximation uh, we are going to see the discussion in a simple way. And for this simple discussion, we consider the one dimensional crystal lattice, okay? So that our calculation will be easier and we can understand the fact more easily and more conveniently, okay? So let us consider uh, there is an electron in, inside, uh, moving inside a one dimensional lattice. And you know, inside the lattice, uh, there is a, there exists periodic potential. And for applying this nearly free electron approximation, you must consider that the periodic potential inside the lattice is weak, okay? And we have seen earlier uh, in the introductory lecture that if this potential under which the electron will move is weak, then this can be taken as a perturbation and uh, we have the nearly free electron approximation, okay? Now, uh, what is our aim actually in this? Aim is same, as you have discussed the KP model, okay? And you have seen that uh, by applying KP model, we find that in our solids there exist a lot energy band and forbidden energy gap, 
okay similarly by this uh, nearly free electron approximation we will get again the same result okay but uh, the result will be different but uh, uh, we will have an idea that actually inside a solid there there exist energy bands with uh, the energy gap so what is the width of that uh, energy energy gap uh, or band gap you can say and the uh, allowed band what's the width all these things can be discussed by considering the motion of an electron in a periodically varying weak potential okay and for this we will think about the wave equation first and then we will see the uh, energy eigen value and the eigen function of that electron using the perturbation theory okay so you know if a electron is in one dimensional motion under a potential v of x then the time independent schrodinger equation is given like this this is d2 psi by dx square plus 2m over h bar square e minus v of x psi equal to 0 okay this is uh, the schrodinger equation in one dimension uh, when the potential is time independent here potential v uh, may vary with position but not with time so we have to set up uh, with equation as schrodinger's time independent equation okay now uh, if we consider that this potential function v of x is zero you know if v is zero it means our electron is completely free not nearly free, free but it is completely free and what will happen when the electron is completely free you have already discussed this thing in your course on free electron theory of metals and also in your course in quantum mechanics okay in fact you know in that very condition the solution of this schrodinger equation is simply a plane wave okay simply a plane wave and uh, the energy of electron will be simply its kinetic energy because electron is free it means its potential energy is zero so in case uh, if you consider that uh, this v is equal to zero then your schrodinger equation becomes like this this is d2 psi by dx square 2m over h bar square e psi equal to zero and this is the wave equation for a free electron okay and uh, it's this equation has a well known solution of plane wave and that can be given like this if phi k of x is the ground state eigen function of the electron then this phi k of x this is given by 1 over root l times e to the power i pi x over a okay or uh, you can also write it like this 1 over a square root of l times e to the power i k x actually here this k is equal to pi over a this is for this i have written here k okay actually uh, here you can see this uh, wave function is normalized over a length l of the lattice so this uh, one over a square root of l is the normalization factor okay and actually it is length of our lattice okay and uh, in this case uh, you can see that the wave function is simply a traveling wave uh, with all possible values of k okay and if you talk about the energy of the electron what will be that it is easy to think since electron is free so its energy means its kinetic energy and the kinetic energy of this unperturbed electron here no perturbing potential is acting on the electron so this is also called unperturbed energy or ground state energy of our electron and that is given by e naught k you know for a free electron energy e naught will be equal to p square over 2 but p is equal to h bar k so this will be h bar square 
k square over 2 okay so this is the ground state energy or unperturbed energy of the electron okay but now we consider uh, that a small periodic potential is introduced and when you will introduce the a small periodic potential this potential will now perturb the free electron wave function defined in this equation 2 and also the energy of the electron defined in equation 3 okay actually the real functions and the energy can be calculated in a simple way by using the perturbation theory which you study in your course on quantum mechanics as i have told you earlier so now we will apply the per concept of perturbation theory particularly time independent perturbation theory to find the wave function and the energy eigen value of this electron okay so when you will apply the perturbation theory then you will see that the wave function which uh, wave, that wave function psi will be also uh, k dependent so i have leveled it by k so the psi k of x in accordance with the perturbation theory can be given like this this is equal to phi k of x plus summation k dash not equal to k expectation value of v this numerator you know in this bracket symbol represents what this is actually the expectation or average value you can say of potential v over the states k and k dash or phi k and phi k dash okay i think uh, you have uh, an idea of this notation and if uh, you are not uh, familiar with this notation please watch my video on uh, the expectation value of of the quantum mechanical operators in my playlist of quantum mechanics and you can uh, watch my video on the postulates of quantum mechanics where you will get the details of this notation okay so actually the numerator inside this uh, summation is actually the what this is actually the <coughs> average value or you can say expectation value of v over the states k and k dashed okay so see this is simply read as k dashed v k okay you, you do, do not need to say that this is bra k dashed v k k it is not read like this this is simply read as k dashed v k okay and over e not k minus e not k dash times phi k dash of x okay but uh, as uh, you have seen that this phi k of x is given like this this is 1 over root over l e to the power i k x so this phi k of x will be replaced by 1 over square root of l times e to the power i k x and in the similar manner this phi k dash of x this will be 1 over root l times e to the power i k dash x okay so this uh, 1 over root l is taken as a common factor and so you can write expression for psi k of x like this this is 1 over square root of l times e to the power i k x plus summation k dash not equal to k k dash v k over e not k minus e not k dash times e to the power i k dash x okay actually you know uh, you have studied in your course on quantum mechanics that this symbol is actually defined in integral form like this this uh, k dash v k this is uh, defined as integral for all values of possible over all possible values of x phi k dash star v phi k dx okay uh, using this uh, uh, concept this expectation value is calculated you have seen this thing in your course on quantum mechanics okay 
actually uh, in perturbation theory you calculate first order correction term in energy second order correction term and higher order correction term here you will see that the, there will be uh, the the first order correction term is not needed here because that will be equal to zero so we directly find the perturbed energy correct to the second order and uh, what will be that if you have an idea of perturbation theory you can say that the perturbed energy corrected to up to the second order term this e of k is given as e not k this is unperturbed energy plus summation k dash not equal to k and mod of k dash v k square over this e not k minus e not k dash okay actually uh, just uh, we will see that uh, this k dash v k this will be equal to zero so the first order correction is not considered here okay we directly consider the second order correction term but how this is uh, this will be zero uh, we will see just now okay now you know the periodic potential can be expressed in ter in terms of fourier series so if uh, this v of x is expanded in terms of fourier series you can write that this v of x equal to summation n not equal to 0 vn e to the power minus i 2 pi nx over a where you know this n is integer actually this is actually uh, 1 2 3 4 and so on this even may be negative n may be positive integer or it may be negative integer so you may equally define this vx for negative integer too then at the place of v and we will write uh, this minus v minus n okay so in this way you can define uh, you can expand this uh, v of x which is a which is the periodic potential in fourier series okay so if you consider the form of v of x in this form defined in equation 6 in terms of fourier series now then see what is the expectation value of v uh, over the states k and k dash in accordance with the definition you know this is equal to integral phi k star v phi k dx but phi k is equal to uh, what phi k you can see this is equal to this much and so phi k star will be 1 over root over l e to the power minus i k x here phi k star means what this is the complex conjugate of the function phi k okay so let us substitute the value of phi k star value of v from this equation 6 and phi k in here so after substituting these values we get that this is summation n not equal to 0 vn over l integral 0 to l here x runs from x equal to 0 to x equal to l because we have considered a one dimensional lattice of length l and inside the integral there will be e to the power minus i k x for this phi k star and this e to the power minus i times 2 pi n x over a this is for this v and uh, e to the power i k x this is for phi k okay and uh, the common uh, and the constant factor v n by l has been taken as a, uh, outside of the integral okay now you can see this uh, exponential factor and this exponential factor will cancel out okay so only this exponential factor e to the power minus i 2 pi n x over a will remain here. okay and uh, you can expand this by using this formula e to the power minus i theta you know this is cos theta minus i sin 
theta and using this formula you can simplify uh, this e to the power minus i 2 pi nx over a and when you will integrate it then you will see i have not uh, done that algebra here you can do it this is a very simple integration and uh, when you will integrate you will see that if k minus k dash is equal to 2 pi n over a then the, this result will be equal to vn but if k minus k dash is not equal to 2 pi n over a but it has some other values then this will be equal to 0 ok. So now you can see this uh, expectation value of v over the states k and k dash is equal to 0 only it is vn when k minus k dash has this particular value. So in general it is 0 and that is why I have written here that this is equal to 0 and since it is 0 so we do not consider the first order perturbation term or first order energy correction. So you have to directly think about the second order energy correction. Okay? Now, <clears throat> after getting this result, now let us see what will be now this psyche of x. Okay? Psyche of x. You can see psyche of x is defined here. Okay? And uh, we have obtained that this k, uh, this expectation value of v with over the states k and k dash is equal to vn when k minus k dash is equal to 2 pi n over a otherwise it is 0. So in this condition what will be psyche of x you can now write it. So psyche of x under this condition is 1 over a, root over l e to the power i k x plus summation k dash not equal to k vn divided by e naught k minus e naught k dash times e naught sorry e to the power i k dash x but let us see k dash will be equal to k minus 2 pi n over a because k minus k dash is equal to 2 pi n over a so k dash is k minus 2 pi n over a. So instead of that k dash I have written it. Okay? And so finally we get that this eigen function psyche of x of the electron is 1 over root over L e to the power i k x. You can take this e to the power i k x here and here as a common factor. And the remaining term is 1 plus summation n not equal to 0. Because uh, when n is equal to 0, you can see then k minus k dash will be 0 and uh, in that condition this result will be 0. And so we will sum up this term when n is not 0 but n has all other integral values like 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Okay? So this is summation n not equal to 0 vn over e not k minus e not k dash times e to the power minus i 2 pi n x over a. Okay? Now you know uh, we have seen uh, in our first lecture on this band theory a very important theorem which is called Bloch theorem. And you know uh, when the electron moves in a periodically varying potential then the solution of Schrodinger equation is Bloch function and what is Bloch function? Bloch function is simply the plane wave modulated by a periodic function uk of x. So since in this problem in this condition too our electron is moving in a weak periodic potential. So definitely the wave functions of the electron must be in Bloch form 
and so you can say in accordance with bloch theorem psi k of x must be given like e to the power i k x times u k of x but the actual value of psi k of x we have we have derived in this equation 8 okay in this equation 8 so now let us compare this equation 8 with this equation 9 you can see a comparison of 8 and 9 will uh, implies that this function u k of x is simply equal to 1 over a square root of l times 1 plus summation n not equal to 0 bn over e not k minus e not k dash times e to the power minus i 2 pi n x over a okay this is actually a u k of x and in this way we have obtained Uh, the wave function and the, you can see this wave function is simply in the form of the bloch function okay now uh, you can see what will be the energy eigen value taking this uh, second order perturbation under a quant as we have seen that this expectation value uh, of uh, v over the states k and k dash is equal to vn so let us substitute this value uh, which you have obtained in this equation 7a for the expectation value of b in equation 5 and uh, after substituting that you will get that this e of k is equal to e not of k plus summation n not equal to 0 mod of vn square uh, mod vn square over e not k minus e not k minus 2 pi n over a because uh, here you know this k dash is equal to k minus 2 pi n over a okay so in this way applying the time independent perturbation theory we have obtained the wave function of the electron moving in this weak uh, weakly uh, <coughs> weak uh, potential which is periodically varying and its energy eigen value corrected up to second order perturbation okay in fact uh, till now you have seen that the wave function is simply the plane wave modulated by this periodic function uk of x defined by this region but actually uh, when the electron moves inside this uh, crystal lattice then at the zone boundary that is at the boundary of the uh, first brillouin zone bragg reflection takes place you know and due to uh, the bragg reflection we now have two types of electron waves inside the crystal one is the original incident wave and another is bragg reflected wave and you know these two waves will superimpose over one another and due to the superposition of the incident electron wave and the bragg reflected wave a standing wave will be formed okay so actually the electrons wave suffers bragg reflection at the zone boundary uh, that is at k equal to n pi by a and due to the superposition of the incident wave and the reflected wave a standing wave is formed and uh, so the wave function for that standing wave must can be written like this this is psi k of x equal to e to the power i k x times a not plus a n times e to the power minus i 2 pi n x over a actually here this a not this is amplitude of the incident wave or you can say that this is constant for the incident wave and a n is actually the amplitude of the reflected wave which depends on the value of n for different n a n will have different value okay now uh, using this equation 11 that is when you have defined this psi okay then you can find uh, from here d2 psi by dx square okay 
and uh, we have also defined uh, the energy eigen value uh, here e not k that is unperturbed energy okay and uh, uh, and uh, you have seen that the this value uh, this expectation value is equal to vn uh, under this condition okay so in fact uh, now we will write the one dimensional schrodinger equation in a proper manner and we will substitute the values of all quantities from our previous results so let us see we now write the schrodinger equation in this form this is minus h bar h bar square over 2m d2 sub at dx square plus v psi equal to e psi okay this is uh, uh, one of the form of schrodinger equation writing schrodinger equation now as i have told you after differentiating this equation 11 two times with respect to x you can obtain the value of this d2 psi by dx square okay and uh, this v uh, is defined here you can see the v is defined here you can see it here okay and this energy e this energy e is actually the unperturbed energy which you have seen this is equal to actually e not k and that is equal to h bar square k square over 2 so using all those results in uh, this equation you will get this result i have uh, not uh, shown all the steps you can do it and uh, you when you will apply this equation 11 along with equation 6 on this equation your result will be like this this is h bar square over 2m times k square a not e to the power i k x okay plus h bar square over 2m k minus 2 pi n over a whole square actually this is actually equal to k dash okay this is equal to k dash times a n e to the power i k minus 2 pi n over a times x plus summation n not equal to 0 vn dash e to the power minus 2 pi n dash i x over a times e to the power i k x and times a not plus a n e to the power minus 2 pi n x over a okay and that is equal to e times this much actually psi you can see is equal to this much so here the value of psi has been substituted okay so this is obtained by using equation 11 and 6 in this schrodinger equation okay now uh, we can take e of k at the place of e and e not k at the place of uh, h bar square k square over 2m and e not k dash at the place of this h bar square over 2m k minus 2 pi n over a whole square okay so making these substitutions in this result now that equation will become a not e not k minus e1 e k times e to the power i k x plus a n e not k dash minus e of k e to the power i k minus 2 pi n over a times x plus a not summation n dash not equal to 0 vn dash e to the power i times k minus 2 pi n dash over a times x and plus a n summation n dash not equal to 0 vn dash e to the power i k minus 2 pi n over a 
माइनस टू पाई एन डैश ओवर ए टाइम्स एक्स एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस विल बी योर रिजल्ट आफ्टर दिस सब्सटीट्यूशन ओके नाउ एक्चुअली व्हेन एन डैश विल बी इक्वल टू एन एन डैश विल बी इक्वल टू एन देन यू नो दिस टर्म विल बैनिश बट नाउ Actually, this result is simplified in a proper condition. Actually, for simplifying equation twelve, we will multiply this equation by a factor e to the power minus i k x. Okay, throughout. And after multiplication of equation twelve throughout by this factor e to the power minus i k x, we will integrate it. Between x equal to zero and x equal to a, when this algebra will be performed, then you can see that the second and the third term will contribute nothing uh, significant. It means the significance of the second and third term will become negligible. Okay, and the contribution from the fourth term. Will be possible only when n dash is equal to minus n. Otherwise, this fourth term will also not contribute. So, taking these facts under account, your final result then becomes like this. This is a not times e not k minus e of k. Plus a n v minus n equal to zero. Okay, and this can be written like this. This is a not times e not of k minus e of k plus a n v n star. Actually, I have written here this v n star at the place of v minus n. You can see how we can say that the complex conjugate of v n star is equal to v minus n. You know, we have seen that in terms of Fourier series, this periodic potential v x can be written like this. This is summation n not equal to zero v n e to the power minus two pi n i x over a. Okay. And you know uh, that n is integer. This may be positive integer or negative integer. So this v of x is also defined in case of negative integer. So if you take n now equal to minus n, then v x can be written like this. Okay. But since uh, v of x is real, not complex, so uh, this v. Uh, Of x and b star of x, both will be equal because both are real. Okay, and so you can see when you will take v star of x, that is complex conjugate of v of x, then this second term will become what? This is summation n not equal to zero v minus. n and e to the power minus 2 pi n i x over a and that will can will cancel by this term and so you can say equating these two we get that this v n star is equal to v minus n so in stead of this v minus n we have written here v n star okay i think we have clear and understand why v minus n and v n star are equal. now in the similar manner as you have as i have told you that you have to multiply this equation 12 by the factor e to the power minus i k x and then we integrate it between x equal to 0 and x equal to a in the similar manner if uh, that very equation is multiplied by e to the power minus i k dash x in stead of i k x and uh, integrate in the similar manner then we get a result just like this uh, 13 and what result will be that you can see that is a not bn plus an times e not of k dash 
minus e of k equal to 0. Okay. Now let us see these equations 13 and 14. These are simultaneous linear equations. And these equation will have non-vanishing solution for A0 and An only when the determinant of the coefficients of A0 and An will vanish. This is in accordance with the theory of determinant. So you can see I have written that equation 13 and 14 may simultaneously solve for A0 and An for a non-zero solution, the determinant of the coefficient of a0 and an must be zero. So you can see this determinant, the coefficient of a0 in equation 13 is what? This is e0 of k minus e of k. So this is the coefficient of a0 in equation 13. And coefficient of uh, uh, an, okay? Coefficient of a n is what? This is uh, v n star. So I have written here v n star. And in this equation 14, the coefficient of a naught is v n, and that of a n is this much. So this has been written here. You can see. Now solve this determinant. We will for solving we will simply take the cross multiplications and subtract. And after uh, simplifying, you will get that this is e square of k plus e naught of k times e naught of k dash minus v n times v n star, okay? Minus e of k times e naught k e naught of k plus e naught of k dash, and that is equal to zero. Actually, you can see this is a quadratic equation in e of k, okay? And uh, you also know that Vn times Vn star, this is simply mod of Vn square, okay? So in this equation, you can substitute mod of Vn square instead of this product Vn and Vn star. And uh, we will put the value of E naught k. You have seen that this E naught k here the symbol not is as superscript, not as a subscript. Okay. This is actually equal to h bar square k square over 2. Bar. Okay. And uh, equation 7 also says that the expectation value of V is equal to Vn in a particular condition, otherwise zero. So we will use the equation three where this has been defined. And in equation seven, you can see the result is K dash Vk is equal to Vn when, when K, da, K minus K dash, not here K dash is equal to 2 pi n over a. Using these two results in this quadratic equation and solve, finding its roots, we will get that this E of k is equal to this much. You can note down it. You will get. So this is actually, these are actually the roots of that quadratic equation, but here, uh, instead of uh, this E naught of k, uh, h bar square k square over 2 has been written and at the place of uh, this v n square this uh, expectation value has been written okay so we get this value of e of k okay but you know at the zone boundary k is equal to n pi over a so if uh, you will find the value of this e of k at the zone boundary then you have to substitute n pi over a instead of k. So substituting uh, n pi over a instead of k in this result, we find that the value of e of k at the zone boundary is equal to h bar square k square over 2m 
प्लस माइनस मोड ऑफ भी एन बट यू नो एच बार स्क्वायर के स्क्वायर ओवर टू एम दिस इज इक्वल टू ई नॉट ऑफ के सो दिस इज ई नॉट ऑफ के प्लस माइनस वी एन ओके एंड के हियर इज एन पाई ओवर सो दिस कैन बी इक्वेलेंटली रिटर्न आई ई नॉट ऑफ एन पाई ओवर ए प्लस माइनस मोड ऑफ भी एन ओके Actually, you can see here this first term uh, in the RHS of this equation represents the free electron energy, okay, associated with the zone boundary. It means say, at the zone boundary, this is elect an uh, electrons free electrons energy, okay, and uh, this equation. Actually, represents the energy of the standing wave at the zone boundary, and so the energy gap in the E K curve will be what? If your aim is to find the band gap E G, that will be found simply by the difference of this E K taking this plus sign and uh, the value of E K when you will take this minus sign. Okay. so when we will take plus sign we will write the value of ek as e plus of k okay and when you will take this minus sign then you write it e minus of k and difference of those two values of ek at the zone boundary will give the band gap so band gap eg is given as ek e plus k minus e minus k but you can see when uh, we will subtract Uh, e plus e minus k from e plus k, then this first term will cancel out, and this uh, mod of V n will be added, and therefore this band gap will be equal to two times of mod of V n. Okay, two times of mod of V n. So uh, this is the value of the band gap. Okay. here uh, as i have told you that uh, the first term represents the free particle energy associated with the zone boundary and uh, in view of the fact that at the zone boundary k is equal to n pi over a standing waves have different energies are uh, set up and so uh, and uh, that should be interpreted as giving the energy of these standing waves okay and since difference of their energy represents the uh, band energy gap in the energy versus k curve so this gap should be definitely equal to two times of modulus of v okay actually here this vn is the nth fourier coefficient in the fourier series expansion of the periodic potential okay and this is at uh, and so at every zone points k equal to n pi over a there is a gap in the energy width of uh, this two times mod of v n and it is centered about the energy value as uh, this e not uh, k which is actually equal to h bar square k square over 2 okay and uh, so uh, the other values of k the energy is continuous okay and so this uh, <coughs> when uh, you will plot the energy in against of uh, the wave vector k then uh, the parabola which will be obtained here you can see in this figure okay actually in this figure you can see that uh, at uh, this at the zone boundary k equal to pi over a or minus pi over a actually there is a discontinuity in this e v e k parabola okay and again at the boundary 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a then again there is discontinuity so this figure in this figure you can see the allowed and the forbidden band uh, obtained from this theory and it is obvious that uh, we observe that the essential feature of the curve are almost same as obtained on the basis of the kp model okay so this is not very far uh, different from that okay 
Actually, this approximation is valid whenever the motion of the valence electron is influenced equally by the presence of all the ions of the crystal. And this is uh, the case in crystals in which the lattice constant is so small that the wave functions are for electrons on neighboring atoms overlap to a large extent and interact or whenever the valence electrons are loosely bound with the ions. Okay. So the outer electrons in the alkali metals uh, like <coughs> alkali metals all tend to show the nearly free electron character. Okay. So I think uh, you have definitely enjoyed this uh, concept of uh, nearly free electron approximation and now in the second lecture we will see the concept of uh, the tight binding approximation. Okay, thank you very much.